Hi friends, I'm Tammy and I'm excited today we are painting these really fun Cosmo flowers. So we're gonna start with light layers and then we're gonna slowly add in some dimension, some shadows, some texture by adding in some really dark, juicy color. So come along with me, grab your paintbrush. This is easy, you can do it. I'll show you exactly what to do. So we're getting started today with our painting and I have this lovely brush here. It's called a number one round. It does not follow the number system. It's a German brush, does not follow the number system of the American sizes we're used to. But I would say this is close to maybe a number 12, if I were to guess. So anyway, it's a really nice point on it. We are just going to grab some of our yellow to start off and we're going to make our centers of some of our cosmos. So I'm just going to do some stippling. I want to make some pretty, uh, pretty marks here. I don't want to cover up all that white space. Now I might do a little bit here in the middle, but then have some of those little dots just hanging out. Okay. And we'll be adding some brown to this also. So that is our first center. I think I'll do another one just over here. And maybe it's more like a, it's a little tilted. So maybe this side looks kind of flat. And then here it looks a little bit more rounded. So we'll have our second flower there. And then let's do another one up top. And so just a circle right here and a lot of white space. And we can fill in more if we have too much white space. It's not a problem. We can always do that later. So I'm going to actually take off some of this yellow. I don't wanna waste it. Clean my brush. And then we're gonna get into our pink. So I'm just gonna mix this up now. Cosmos, you know, we can, we can do it all the same color. We can change the color up. These are gonna be pink. I might add in some other colors too. I don't know, but I might do some lighter and some darker. So what we're going to do, and when you look at a Cosmo flower, you're going to see sometimes they have like, I don't know, like eight petals, or it seems like they have more. So we're just going to, and they're very close together. So we're just going to start and just, you know, these wonky little shapes here, filling in that part. And I'm just letting it touch down a little bit. I don't want a lot of that yellow to spread. So I'm putting those in there. And maybe squeegee my brush a little bit. So I'm not gonna be worried too much about how many petals I'm laying down. I have seen some Cosmos that had eight and then I sometimes I see these pictures of them and they just look like the petals go on for days, so. We're gonna just work with what we have, and they're a little bit, a little bit kind of rounded-ish here, a little bit wonky. I'm leaving some white space. I think that looks pretty. I'm squeegeeing off my brush once again, and just adding in a lighter petal here, and let's do another lighter one here too. So these can be really compact. So you're not seeing exactly, you know. Sometimes it's hard to see where one petal ends and one begins because they're just sometimes layered on top of each other. All right, and if you don't like how a petal is, by all means, you can augment it, augment it and change it up to where you want it to be. And you can even make your petals longer too. If you start looking at this and you feel like they're just too short, they need to be a little different. Um, remember too that this is that first layer of color and we are going to add in other layers to make them fancy and pretty so I always say don't stress about this part not that you should stress at all but I don't want you to worry too much because we're going to do details I say that a lot don't I I think so I think it's sound advice <laughs> all right so just adding that in there. And you know, when whenever I paint, I, you know, I want to paint loosely typically. And so we're kind of going for the idea of a Cosmo. And that one has some darker petals, some darker moments happening. 
and you can tell that these petals stop here and they start here. We've got some bleeding happening. It's okay. So if that's happening to you, don't stress about it. It's fine. I'll add in a little purple in this next one. And, you know, I'm just trying something different, just pressing down with the belly of the brush. Allow your colors to mix together, squeegee and angle your brush or angle your paper, whatever feels more comfortable for you. If you want to, you know, move your paper around, that's fine. Get some bleeding, some spreading. And if you don't like all that white space in between petals, just fill it in. Just fill it in, just be, just be easy going about it. I'm trying to be easy going about this and, you know, not stressing out and not worrying about what's happening here. I am keeping my flowers pretty close together because I like that tight look. You can keep them a little bit farther apart if you feel like it. I have noticed when it comes to this type of flower that sometimes they can tend to look uh, like the petals. This is gonna be a side facing, so we're just kind of uh, making the idea of um, these, these petals that are facing downward here. And so, there we go. A little bit there, maybe there's another petal over here. And so some of your petals, you know, might seem like they are jaggedy, kind of like this, and others might seem more smooth, like something like that. So you're just kind of, your job is to decide to do what makes you happy. And we're wanting to do some more blooms. I'm actually gonna grab some more of that yellow again, just really saturated yellow, maybe dab on my paper towel and add in a few little yellows. Maybe this one can be smaller. And just a little bit here. And maybe one, you know, down here too. And then we'll add those in. Grab some pink. A little bit more water here. Dab your brush if it's too wet. And then just start adding in your petals. I'm just pressing down or moving things around. Make them really short if it's kind of facing to one side versus the other. And we can fix the center later. I actually like it when it starts to bleed and it just looks really pretty. Sometimes you want things to be a little bit more controlled than that. So this one is really, really side facing. That's pretty, I like that a lot. So we're gonna try that over here and that's a lot of water. So just dab your brush on something and soak up some of that water. And then try that same kind of look over here. A little side facing bloom, everything kind of connected. All right, and we can start adding some green parts too as soon as we're ready to do so. This guy is just a little bit wonky for me. I'm gonna take off some of that paint and we'll change it up a little bit just to make it look a little bit more pretty. Um, so I wanna start adding my green. I'm gonna grab my some of my sap green here, my palette which has some brownish green on it already, which is perfect, it'll serve us well. And we're just going to see where the middle of that flower is and just start to kind of sketch down like that some of our stems. I do want to keep our stems fairly together, like it's a nice little bouquet. So that's what I'm aiming for today. Right there. Okay, and then that stem is from here. This one will just assume it's kind of right there. And I do like to keep my stems just a little bit, just a little bit um, kind of curving in different directions, just to show some interest for interest's sake here. Crisscrossing and all the things. All right, for now, that's good. Let's rinse our brush. And I'd like to, I'm gonna dab it, and I'd like to do a nice darker Cosmo over here. So I think what I'm gonna to try to do is just do 
the petals first and I'm just pressing down. I am finding, you know, it's obviously a little bit quicker sometimes just to put the petals and then the center. I also appreciate doing the centers first. So I'm kind of figuring it out, you know, what I like to do better, but it just depends on what my mood is and what I think is gonna be a, a fun combination. Okay, so I like how these are popping over here and then coming down over here. We have one here and I think I'd like to do another side facing situation right here. So just a little bit, just pressing down like that. So a little bit of a petal that's kind of hidden. Okay. And then just sort of making it up guys. All right. And we'll leave that part for a center piece, the middle kind of coming on, coming on, going on over there. Is that what I'm trying to say? What am I trying to say? And then maybe a little bit more here. Some of these can have some little crazy marks. All right, rinse the brush, grab some more green. This one or this one, kind of similar. I'm okay with either one. All right, and then we'll start to connect some of those stems. Right here, and then this one's gonna have one coming down right there, and this guy as well. And just crisscrossing in there. Okay. All right. So at this point, I think I want something right here. So I'm going to go really light, a lot of water, a little bit of paint, and I'm going to do that same type of shape that I just did over here. Similar shape, I should say, for the side facing. Grab some green, sort of connecting the dots. Okay, all right, so at this point, I'm going to let this dry and then come back and we'll do some more details. Now that that's dried, I want to add just a little bit of green kind of underneath some of these areas because when you're looking at a Cosmo, especially around this part on the outside, when you're looking at a Cosmo, you have this yellow center but then some, you've got these tiny little dots around there. And <clears throat> sometimes it seems like there's some green underneath. I haven't actually looked through it to know, but that's kind of what I observed. So I'm gonna do that and it's gonna give it a really pretty fancy look too, I think. And then once that dries, we can go back over the top and add some more of that yellow. And I think that'll be pretty. Okay. And so these that don't have centers yet, I'm just gonna go ahead and add in some of that, that green. And then we'll add the yellow, and this guy is going to need, you know, sometimes you're painting, and then you forget something, and then you realize you forgot something. So I'm gonna put in just a few little petals right there because we have a yellow center, which means we need to see some petals. Also, um, I'm going to grab some more green sappy green and what I want to do is start adding in just the connector points of where you would connect the flower to the stem and it's a little bit drippy this one right here is just you know floating and I like to make it fancy just take a pointed brush and add in some little little areas where it would extend out Okay, and this one also. I'm holding my brush pretty loose so that I can work quickly and loosely and all the things. Okay, so how do you feel about your painting so far? I hope you're enjoying this. If you do enjoy this, I hope you would like the video, let people know that we're having a good time, and then also subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss out on any of my YouTube videos in the future. All right, so what we wanna do is start adding in some fun details to these Cosmos. So I have a bit of a darker mix here, and this is a very large brush. Like I said, maybe a number 12, 
And so I'm gonna dab because I don't want so much liquid. You're gonna get a lot because it's a large brush. And I think what I wanna do is go bold. So we've got pink here, but then we also have like a purple situation happening that I'm adding to the pink. So we're gonna get some variation in our colors. And I'm going to dab very liquidy brush. And so I'm going to just kind of take that brush around, just kind of etching in some little pretty lines here. And sometimes I'm going to do some thicker marks and other times not. Just kind of depends on how I'm feeling. And sometimes you can paint mostly the whole flower and other times you don't want to. So the idea here is to just that movement of the brush, allowing it to kind of decide for you how things are gonna turn out, you know? And so if you keep that loose hold on your brush, you're going to have an easier time of being able to put these marks in, I think, because like right now, I'm just kind of moving this brush with my thumb and my forefinger and just allowing it to just swing around and dictate, you know, what I'm doing now. I know it seems kind of weird and especially as you're starting it's going to seem kind of impossible, but it's like my muscle memory is here. You know, I've painted like this before. This is not the first time. And so my muscle memory is kicking in on how I like to do these marks. And so what I like to do is, like I said, thicker places where I will press down, you know, like maybe the center part here. And then with the tip of the brush, I'm just doing squiggly lines sketching it out really. I want to connect everything too. I want everything to be connected to that center. We're just looking for kind of ease in how we're painting this and this one I might actually just paint almost the entire thing just because I want it to look different. So and then thin marks, thin little strokes, sketchy little marks, making sure I take the time to hit up every single petal. So, so far we're getting some fun little designs. Let's look in now instead of flat, we've got more of a 3D look here. And I think I need to add some right here to the tip of it. Now, if you have a lot of water on your brush, you're gonna start seeing some faded marks over here. And then what you wanna do for the third time over, if you wanna do more marks, is just dip into the well itself and paint over. And then you're gonna get your darkest darks, your saturated color, and it's not going to fade as much, you know, once that water dries. So let's go ahead and do this one too. The sketchy marks. And I'm going to dab my brush because I'm getting thicker lines where I want it to be thin because I have so much water on my brush. So just paying attention to that and knowing, you know, what kind of water control you're wanting to experience. <laughs> I can even lighten this up a little bit. So I'm just doing a little bit here. And I don't want every petal to look the same, of course. So you wanna change it up a little bit. And some angles, you'll find this to be a lot easier than others. So that's why we say just flip your paper if you're feeling any sense of unease with the process and it's feeling a little challenging for you. Now, one thing that you could do too is just kind of, you know, do these little blobs, brush strokes, especially if it's a side facing, you know, that's really easy. It's not hard to do. And that can give you a very satisfying look as well. So that's one thing. If you wanna just leave it at that, that will make it um, an easier experience. Or you can just take a really painted, pointed brush and just sketch, sketch, sketchy marks. Yeah, and just be intuitive about it. Okay. So for these guys, a little bit extra over here. I might just do tiny thin marks really quick, you know, coming out of this, the center of the flower. And that can be really pretty just to leave it like that 
or maybe I do a little bit here and a little bit down here. And maybe I change up the colors that I'm using. Maybe I'm not using pink, you know, and purple because maybe that's not where I wanna focus my, my energy. So, you know, most of this would be that pink and purple color group here. Um, pink and purple, yeah. I don't wanna change it up now because then we're gonna have an imbalance between all these over here that kind of match. But what can be fun, and you can even, look at this, like just turn the brush, utilize different parts of it, press down with the brush to create, you know, more of that color. If you don't like, you know, the way that a petal is shaped, this is a really great time to reshape your petals as well. And also connecting your petals, making sure they're connected to your center if they are not. Got more of that purple here. And let's see, that one still has a really wet um, stem connector. So we are almost done with this layer. It doesn't have to be too hard, uh, to, it doesn't have to take too long to do these marks. But for you, if you are, this is your first time doing this, you might wanna take your time. And that's totally fine. So we're creating these shadow sides, we're creating depth and interest, just some tiny little brush strokes on the tips of the flower to make it come alive. This didn't get much of a marking there. And then this guy right here, the last but not least, I am going to just kind of add in some really sketchy lines and maybe pressing down with the belly as well, uh, connecting that with the green there. Um, and just making it fancy. Okay, so now this is drying here. I'm gonna rinse my brush and also squeegeeing on the side will get some of that color out. Dab your brush. What I wanna do is grab some really concentrated yellow. Now is the time to do those dots again. And yellow is really hard to get it to show up in a painting. It doesn't go very dark. And so you want to work um, with the most concentrated form and sometimes even add some orange to that and that'll help darken it up. A little bit of that in there. Adding in some over here too. And I might come in and do a lighter brown also at the end for some contrast. I think we might need that in here. See if I can get away with the yellow without everything bleeding together. That worked out. And this one also needs our center. It's so small, so I just, just kind of put that paint in there pretty quickly, not worried too much about it. Okay, everyone that needs a center has it. Saving, reserving some of that paint because it's lovely. Okay, so we haven't done any leaves and leaves would be fun and important to do. So let's grab more of that. It's a really exciting, intense color. And I want this to be a little bit more desaturated. So I'm gonna grab a little bit of this red just to tone it down. You could tone it down with brown too if you wanted. I like using red, it just makes a more interesting color versus a dull color. And the shapes of the leaves for the cosmos are kind of interesting. And so I'm going to switch over to my dagger brush because it has a nice point, but you can use whatever type of brush that you have. So we're gonna add in some of them with this color here. So they just have, they kind of look like these, almost these little grasses, it just lines like that. And then we're just adding in some thin little points. So pretty easy to do and unique. I would definitely say <laughs> it's definitely unique. So I'm gonna add some in here too. We don't need to be concerned, you know, don't be too worried about if those leaves you're adding in, are they connecting somewhere on the stem? I'm just trying to add in some foliage, some fullness. So I'm just using a really thin brush or a brush that has a thin tip on it, which is what I have today and just moving these lines around. 
filling in that space with these kind of little, almost like little branches. So you can see I'm, I'm just, I'm not thinking too much about it, just adding this in. We have a lovely bouquet here of our cosmos and you know, if it was a bouquet of other things, we could have other types of leaves in there because, you know, often uh, they will strip the flowers in a bouquet from the original leaves, like for example, with roses, and then add in other types of leaves um, in that hole, in the whole bouquet. So, you know, but today, since we just have Cosmos in here, I want it to be true to life. And let's add in a spray of those leaves right here. A little bit of a contrast between the green and the pink and then you know some greenery poking out right here and so I'm just you know squiggling my brush and filling in the space I'm gonna make that a little bit taller just like that so I think I want to add some more right here too just kind of curving towards this flower right here and filling it out. So if you had a liner brush, a liner brush would be really good for this. Um, or number one or two round is also really good. If you're wanting to pick up some more brushes and to be able to have the ability to do some of this. So I'm just gonna do a little bit more. So when you are looking at your composition, you know, you're wanting to see what is the balance here? What's gonna make everything look balanced out? And where do I put things? And that can be hard to know because you want it to look attractive to the eye and you don't want to stress about it. And so I always recommend, you know, stepping back. And I'm gonna do one right here because we have something tall here and I want something else tall right here. Take a, take a look at your painting, step back and analyze how do you, how do you receive your painting? You know, do you feel like it has a good balance. Do you feel like it's missing something? Does it need some some balance in one way or another just to make it look um, attractive in the way that you want it to look? Okay, so we're gonna leave this for now and I want to come back to these flower moments. We're gonna go more concentrated, okay? So I've got this bright, this bright purple and I'm just going a thin line literally over some of the lines that we've created, maybe a, a thinner line than we had before. And if that's not showing up, you can always even add black to it. This one is showing up here, I'm seeing that. And so I just wanna add in a little bit more, make it a little bit more fancy and pretty. So when you have your lightest shades and then your, your values, uh, which we had first, and then you put in your medium, and then your light, uh, sorry, and then your darkest values of color, you're going to see so much dimension come out of your objects. Now with flowers, you know, how do we make them so they don't look flat? Well, we can add all these pretty details to give them some oomph and some pizzazz, some interest, as well as some uh, three-dimensionality. So since I have this purple that is mixed with black, it's really dark. And we're going to see some really cool marks and shadows out of this one. All right, so you know you don't have to go this dark and bold, but if you want to, might as well. Just give it a shot and see what you think. I'm going to kind of do some more sketchy parts on this one too. Just a little bit. Now I tend to have a harder time with painting, you know, from this way down. If I'm doing a flower, I, I have an easier time of going upwards and doing those brush strokes, but I don't want to angle my paper. Plus my paper is taped down. So it's kind of a, it's just a, um, it's just one of those things. I just have to keep it the way it is and it's helping me practice and I'm going to be okay. So putting that over the top. So you can see how fun this can be. You can try just random colors. You could do some white if you wanted to do some white cosmos and then maybe, you know, do 
some like green moments or <laughs> some red or orange. You just make it really fun and peppy, I would say. I you know, want to encourage you guys to try new things because then you end up finding things you love. Sure, sometimes you find things you hate as well, but you never know unless you try. You've got to you've got to put yourself out there and especially if this is just, you know, something that you're practicing in your home, this is not like a a piece that someone asked you to do, then you know what? No big deal. What's the worst that can happen? Trying something out of your comfort zone. I'm going to take some black on my palette with my pink. And black is just an easy way to darken this up for me. So really dark, really dark. And adding some of that in too. So you could just do black over the top too, but it's a little stark. But you know what? It might be something I want to try because like I said, you never know until you try, right? So just a little bit here. And I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you are enjoying this, you know, trip down, hopefully trying something new. Um, and if you are enjoying this, let me know in comments what you like about this painting so far. Have you painted Cosmos in the past? What's kind of your experience with that? I'm getting a little bit more bold as we're moving forward, making some darker marks and some thicker marks just because I'm feeling it. I'm feeling like this is going to be just really, um, really something that I hopefully, you know, won't regret. <laughs> Sorry, I got distracted by the ding of my text message. But um, like I said, you've got to just try some stuff. So anyway, um, guys, I really am glad that you are here and experimenting with me. Um, I think that I wouldn't have gone this bold if I hadn't started talking about it. But I'm liking the results. And remember, your your watercolors are going to dry, you know, about one shade lighter than what you see. So if you put some marks down and then you're worried, just wait it out a little bit, it might lighten up. I'm just gonna do a few more solid petals. I think I'm really liking that look on some of them. And just, it's just creating um, fun accents for me. Okay, so you have to also know when is a good time to stop. And I always say, when you start to ask yourself, is it time to stop? It's usually, in my opinion, for me, it's usually the time to stop. Okay, I do wanna add a little bit of, of that brown, some type of brown to the center. There is this really light caramely color. It's not brown. Um, I think I'm gonna mix it in a little bit with a little bit of my brown. Just to darken it up, dab, because I want my centers to have a little bit more, uh, there we go, a little bit more oomph to it. So we're just stippling, you know stippling. Just making little dots. I wanted to have this come out and just like really be bold and stand out. And sometimes that yellow just can't do that for you. So you have to add in something else that will give you that boldness. A little bit of this brown here too. So I want this to be pretty concentrated. I don't, let me grab this rest of this. I'm, I don't want this to, you know, fade away when it, when everything is dry that you won't see this center here. And I'm filling it out a little bit more on the outside because my petals are just a little bit far away from the center. So like I said, you can always augment things, change it up, make it interesting, make it fun. And there you have it pretty much. A little bit concentrated paint, a little bit more right um, on the base of some of these. And so you'll see if you put too much water, then it just kind of dissolves into nothing. And not nothing, but your your transparent layer is what you're gonna be left with. And if you want a nice, bold, saturated color, then definitely dip into your paint well and get that saturated paint. 
Okay, last but not least, guys, I'm going to do a little splatter. I'm actually going to change my brush to a number six round, just grabbing different brushes tonight, so that I, my splatter drops aren't so big. And then just tap a little bit of splatter at the tops here just to emulate, I don't know, just some pretty magical pollen or something flying around. Love it. All right, guys. Thank you for being here. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I will see you guys next time on the next video.